Okay, so uh, Warren, since you can see my screen, uh, let me open up a couple of charts right here, which you'll be able to see, right? Okay, you can see the S&P. And then you can also see that in terms of a chart. Okay. So, uh, warning your chat box for me. I want you to, uh, hey, Jared, write down um, what would you like to get out from this uh, class? So what challenges are you facing in regards to your technical analysis um, regarding uh, price. So what are the three things that you want, or one thing that you want to get out of from this, and what is your major challenge in technical analysis? Okay, so there are two things. So first question, what would you like to get out of this class? Second question is, what is your major challenge based on technical analysis? What would you like to get out of this class and what is your major challenge based on technical analysis? Either you type it in or you can say it. Uh, you can just unmute, unmute your mic and you can say it. Hi, Jared. You, you can hear me too, right, Jared? Can you hear me? Yep, loud and clear. Cool. Okay. Uh, great, managing risk in today's uh, crazy markets. And what's still a major challenge right there, uh, Warren. And then, uh, how about yourself, Jared? Um, so, uh, to get out of this class, uh, just a refresher on the flow of price. Okay. Um, yeah, with like MTFA and frequencies and analyzing stuff from a bigger picture. Um, my major challenge based on technical analysis is, um, uh, uh, properly identifying uh, strong versus not very strong levels of supply and demand. Okay. All right. Sounds good. Um, so Warren, what is it? Was your major challenge based on technical analysis? If you are perhaps still typing. Okay, let's see if we could uh, unmute you, maybe easier. Do you have a mic there, Warren? Uh, no, okay. Alrighty, going once, twice. Okay, let's move on then. All right, let's go through. Uh, you can't hear. No, I can. Unfortunately, it's not a. Oh, unless no, it wasn't wouldn't work. Um, 
let's go through, okay, so the topic is what? The energy flow, to identify the energy flow of, flow of price. So what is energy flow? Flow is simply the, uh, the motion, a continuation of motion of something, right? That's the, uh, the flow which has the energy component. Let's take water, for example. It has a current. So based on gravity, the flow of water will go through. Yeah, if it's on the stream, then it will flow to the downside. It, um, can it go upstream as well? Yes, based on the current, so it can go upstream. So based on the energy flow of price, on the other hand, price or the flow of price will happen where? Based on, it has to create either from buyers or sellers. In other words, the more buyers that creates, they definitely demand. When there is demand based on buyers, then price will go where? Will go up. When there's more sellers based on supply, then price will simply drop. But these are all based, buying and selling will be also based on the direction. The direction. So the direction is an important element based on time, price, and of course the third component is distance. So the flow of price will be dictated by all these variables or factors, right? So if the direction is pointing to the downside, despite a movement of price to the upside, when the direction or the flow of price is moving down from a corrective point of view, then where is price gonna continue to drop in the long run, up or down? Where will it be? I'll say that again. If the overall direction of the flow of price is pointing to the downside, despite a correction where price is moving upwards, then where will be the overall direction of the flow of price is going to be? Up or down? Down. Absolutely. Then the overall continuation of price will be heading to the downside. Okay, so I will show specific examples. Let's start off with the S&P. If we look at the overall flow or direction of price of the S&P, where is it at? Up or down? It's pretty dead given, right? It's pointing up. So if the overall direction of the flow of price on based on the S&P 500 and it's gone pointing to the upside, then when price will correct itself to the downside. So what would be the logical aspect of trading the S&P? Will you buy or will you sell? Then the answer would be to buy for long term. Despite price is falling. 
Remember that price cannot continue in a straight line or cannot go in a straight line. It oscillates itself. So if something is oscillating, like this one, if it's oscillating, then oscillation will create trends. So oscillation based on harmonic vibration, whether it'll be your heartbeat. So let's take the heart, for example. It oscillates itself. There's an impulse. And that's what keeps you alive when you have, whether we like it or not, you are based on energy, correct? As a person of energy field, then the market itself has also energy, whether you like it or not. It's moving, it's constantly moving, it's not stagnant. It doesn't go in a straight line. However, if you put a median component, if you're dealing here mathematically, then there is a, a median, then it will be a straight line, if there is a median line. So heartbeats, if creates impulse when you have no impulse guess what then you die likewise with the markets if it doesn't have an impulse then it will die so impulsions when there is an impulsion and that means that there's movement when there's movement there's direction when there's direction then there's flow so that's simply if we're dealing here with the universal laws and universal laws of physics, well, the universe is also constantly moving. It ever grows. If we're dealing here spiritually, you as a human being is also, you constantly keep on growing. Unless you believe that you're already perfect, then there's nothing for you to learn. So if we are constantly moving and constantly growing, then the marketplace is also the same. It cannot go in a straight line. So hence, trends whether you define it as an uptrend or a downtrend it is a trend in this particular case the s p 500 is pointing where to the upside so it's trending up when something is trending up you cannot go against that trend or you cannot go against that flow of the direction of price if you go against it then you have that small window of going against it you see this is what happens in human beings as well where a person says i am confident yet you have fear then you now have conflict when you have conflict imagine the amount of energy is being wasted likewise when you're trading against the trend if you're trading against the trend then you are not in the flow with the trend in other words, you are now against the trend. Imagine the amount of energy that it has to take in order for you to be in that state. So, if something is trending, if it goes up, it has to correct. It goes up, it has to correct. If it goes up, it has to correct. So, if it continues to the upside, like here, for example, to create a trend is defined, let's say in this particular case, you are in an uptrend. It is defined as a series of higher highs and higher lows. Downtrend is being defined as lower lows and lower highs. Notice you have A series of higher highs and higher lows where nothing like oops now let's go through here you have a higher high where you don't have a lower high but you're seeing here this was the last high and then this one broke out from that high that created a lower low yet 
this low is still higher compared to these previous major lows and is still a higher low. So the confusion now happens is simply, well, there is a lower low over here, then it should create a lower high in the future. Absolutely. But which one will you follow? The lower low or the higher low? Which one will have hierarchy? Then the higher low will have hierarchy compared to the lower low. Does that make sense? So if there is that hierarchy, then it is better to buy when price drops at a level of demand. So as what we discussed earlier, supply and demand creates price in, in order for it to go to the upside or go to the downside but will be dictated upon the trend or the overall, or overall trend of the particular asset class. So for example, this one, this was a supply that broke out, it became a demand, got tested through here, For heading to the upside. So this alone, if you're dealing you now with price patterns where you have a piercing pattern and you have a higher low, then bingo, then the odds and probability that price will continue to the upside is highly probable because of its trend or the energy flow of price on the overall scale. Unless you're seeing a change of direction right here where you have now a lower high. If you have a lower high, easy. Then they will retest this low to create a new lower low and you'll have a different change of trend, which is gonna head back to the downside on a grander scale of things as a major correction. Not this case though. So that being said, I will erase this. Notice that you have a higher high that broke out one, two, three weeks ago. How do we know that? Well, there's always going to be a timestamp that is going to be given to you as a trader. 29.58.2. 29.58.2. Twenty-nine fifty-three four. So you have a higher high still, and the last high was twenty-nine four zero two, twenty-nine forty-two flat, which is the shooting star right there, or the doji that happened um, September two thousand eighteen. So after one, two, three, four five, six, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven months, they broke out the last high. So it created new higher highs. 29.644, so all a bunch of higher highs and still continuing. So in other words, if there's no lower high, fat chance is gonna come back down. Hence, bunch of higher highs, it's slowing down there in steam, currently in the blue sky territory. The question now is how far it's gonna go? Well, we looked into that, I believe, I believe last week in class where based on Fibonacci extensions, it could go to approximately around 3,200 right there in terms of the S&P. But it's running out of steam, it's running out of volume. So when something is running out of steam, automatically as well that is currently in an overbought conditions and you will see some form of stability before it will turn around to correct before we continue once again so since price is currently at supply in a blue sky territory is it really a great idea to buy at this point in time the answer is no why because when you do not have any form of value or statistical data in the end, then it's simply a speculative component where the valuation of the S&P should be a certain price point. But the question is who is dictating that particular valuation? 
So it could be could be anybody. It could be it's definitely an institutional component. Or if someone believes that the price should be at 32, then so be it, then it's gonna be at 32. But it has to be some form of a valuation or valuated component that the value of the S&P will be a certain price point. Us as retail traders, on the other hand, to be on the safe side, if we do not have that fact or that data, should we keep buying? The answer is definitely no, because you don't know on how far it's going to go. Yes, on a risk management aspect, you would know specifically on how far you're willing to risk. So in other words, if this is the last low that happened last month, which is 27.28.4, then that would be a good solid stop loss point. So right at this point in time, if I'm going to see myself as a seller, then I have a low risk because if this one time stamps at the end of the month, and for argument's sake, it's at 30.24.4 or 2, then I know that will be my hard stop, which is way shorter compared to if I'm buying and my risk is at 27.28.4. That's almost... 300 points difference. Will I really do that in terms of buying? Absolutely. I, will, I won't do it because the risk is too high and the price is at supply, which is against the law of supply and demand. So what would be a better bet that when the price comes back down to create a higher low back to 2,800, then that's where I'm going to buy. However, if I'm gonna be a contrarian, in regard to a correction, then the probability will decrease. And the reason why the probability will decrease is because you're going against the energy flow of price on the overall bigger scale of things. Does that make sense? Yes, no. So, yep. if that makes sense, then let's go through a smaller time frame like the weekly time frame weekly time frame last week showed a very bearish that the bears are currently in control however you have a higher high you do not have a lower high so based on that where you have a, a lower high and everything's pointing to the upside then there could be a possibility of a continuation of price which it did or there is also a possibility that this could continue to go to the downside. So if you're selling within the level supply last week, either you're out of the game, but at least you're within the constraints on the slower, I mean lower risk compared to buying where it's something is too expensive. This is the level of supply. What would be a better bet of buying when the price drops to approximately, it breaks through 29, 50, 45. Of course, a better bet is to go through within here within the 2800 period. So how also do we know on how far we can do a correction? Well, that's easy. It's through utilization of using the food retracement. However, this will only work very well once you have a clear cut of a high. Other than that, speculation will happen when there's some form of specula specul speculation, then you don't have a solid proof that it will actually drop. As far as we know, like the higher high has hierarchy compared to, well, well higher high also higher low to be in fact. So it has hierarchy compared to the closing of the bears that created the bearish candle. So in this particular case, if you're buying at the level of demand right here on 2960, then you have a higher probability that you will continue to go to the upside only if it chooses to. Other than that, if it created a lower high, for example, then this is gonna head back down for sure, all the way to 30, 8.2 to 50 percentile. So somewhere here before it can continue its trend to the upside. 
So with that being said, if we go back now to a daily time frame, you can see once again a different perspective, a different story based on the daily, you now have a higher low. So from a bearish candle where supply is more than actually demand itself, and it created a piercing pattern, which means that the closing price pierced through the body of the bearish candle, and you have a higher low. Man, higher low, higher low, measure higher low. And the odds, that the continuation of the trend to the upside is highly probable. Did it, did it do it? Absolutely. So here on the other, you can see that the closing price is within the level of supply that created a peak, which is now a higher high. So if you're uh, selling, and you put the stop, 3024, 3022, two point gap or two point difference. And if it finishes like that, then the odds to create a new, new trough is highly probable. Does it make sense or did I lose you guys? That makes sense. Okay. Great. So therefore, when something is pointing to the upside, then what would be the rule? If something is trending to the upside, what would be the rule? Will you buy at supply or will you buy at demand? If the energy flow of price is pointing to the upside, will you buy at demand or will you buy at supply? What will it be, guys? What will it be? What will it be, Warren? What will it be? And Jared? Uh, buy at demand. Yes. So, Warren, this is the major rule. Always never go against that rule. Always buy at demand when the energy flow of price is going up or up and it's in an uptrend. So when something in this particular case, when something is too way overbought and is already at supply, way at supply, way at supply, wait for the correction. and buy. Values needed here simply is discipline mainly patience 
you will have to have the discipline to be patient for the price to come to where it's at. If you're buying at supply in a downtrend, I mean, sorry, in an, yeah, if you are buying at, selling at supply in a downtrend, then, then you uh, have a high probability of winning. However, if you are buying at supply in an uptrend, your risk is so high that your probability is also very low because it also has to correct itself to the downside unless there is a continuation of price to the upside, if that makes sense. Okay, very important element to know. Makes sense there, uh, Warren? So that's the answer to it. For example, let's give an example, another example. Let's look at the dollar index. Dollar index is, is currently approaching supply level. After one, two, three, four, five, six, gapped up. So six days of it moving to the outside, which created an impulse from correction, impulsion, then stability, correction before a continuation. Will they break 98, 20, 98, 40? In my own honest opinion, long term, it will. Why do I say that? Because it created a higher low over here a bunch of minor higher lows from a major higher low and a major lower lows. So the odds that the continuation of the flow of price that will go to 102.50 somewhere sometime in the long run is highly probable. Unless the factoring everything in because it's cheap prior to um, Fed's um, either increasing the interest rate and probably to go back to 104 since uh, 2017 is highly probable basically from that. Why? Because it also has to fill that gap. This is such a big gap. So they will have to fill that gap. They will have to fill this gap. So from here, it's not sustainable. Depending on the time frame you're, you're using, it is not sustainable to keep dropping, it's not sustainable to keep going up. It has to correct itself. Weekly time frame shows a very bullish candle from beautiful morning star right there, high or low. So the odds they will break through these highs is simply that's gonna happen. So if we can dictate that, then it's going to be easier for us to trade the euro, for example, against the US dollar. By simply that if price will come back up, correcting between 11.28, all the way up there, 11.96 is too short. Um, the euro against the US dollar. However, right at this point in time, it has to correct and it's going long the euro, going short the US dollar. Why? Because looking at the dollar index, there is also an opportunity of selling the US or the dollar index itself against the major currencies, right? So that's how you can dictate in terms of energy flow of price, and you can see it on a smaller scale of things, like a small time frame, in terms of its movement. And like a puzzle, you just have to put everything all together. I said, oh, okay, longer term, I can't go short because it's an uptrend. So currently the price at the level demand that I better buy. Currently price at the level supply. Yes, there's a possibility it could continue its price to the upside. 
unless you see some form of stability. But if you're gonna go contrarian to go the swing, the retracement, the correction, go for it, but you also have that small window. Would it better for it to wait, be patient, and buy a demand after two, three days? Absolutely. Right, so that's the S&P. And that can be replicated in any pair, stock price, futures price, with the exception of options. Okay. Very simple concept, right? But that's how you can identify energy flow of price. Bullish, slows down. Bullish, stability, continuation, correction, continuation, correction, continuation, correction, continuation. And you'll see another correction, continuation. All righty, questions? Does that make sense? All good here. Yeah, if you can gather this piece of information, you can almost guarantee it will improve your profitability. Sometimes you just need that awareness of it though. Awesome. Well, if they don't have any questions, that is it. We'll wrap it up. Unless you want to do another example. Mm, nothing going once, twice. Excellent. Well, I hope you guys enjoyed that. And then we'll see you next time again. And if you have any... Uh, oh, Ray, I actually have one question. Yes. Uh, sorry. So um, when we're noticing price, uh, you know, flow to the upside, yep. um, what's kind of a good rule of thumb or a good uh, indication that uh, I guess it's, you know, running out of steam and looking to reverse, um, you know, if the flow of price is saying it should go up, and then we're noticing, you know, some sellers coming in. Uh, I guess, when do we draw the line and say, okay, now's the time to sell? Absolutely. Very good question. So when you're seeing stability and you know that there is going to be a change of trend, then you only have that small window that it could basically be. So by utilizing your fields by level of confluences, by say, let's go do a proper example right here. Identifying major and minor ones. Of course, you also have all this. Smaller profits. But you can see 38 and 50. So by utilizing your FIB retracements will be a good guideline of approximately where corrections will happen from that impulse then you only have that small window as a form of a target point, no more, no less. You have a higher probability, want a higher probability, then go to the smaller impulse. If you want to see a uh, level of confluence, then using the minor and using the major combined, you'll see that the 50 and this, oh, the 62 was right here, 50, 38 was pretty close. And then you can then measure approximately and how far in terms of target points before you continue to the upside right there. Did I answer your question there, Jared? 
Um, yeah, it did. Good. Thanks. No worries. That's why retracements, retracements are used, that's why Fibonacci retracements are utilized to figure out approximately where the retracement values of that impulse is going to go. Mm -hmm. And that's where you would be able to utilize that if you're going to short, that's your short window. You can say and hope that, oh, well, my target will be here. Well, you, they have to go through those values first before they'll come to your time. What if all of a sudden turns around and continue to create a new higher high? It's okay if you have a clear cut of a lower high, then the odds that will go through all these numbers are highly probable. Okay, cool. Good job, guys. Then we'll see you next week. Thanks for coming, Warren. Thanks for coming, Jared. Yeah, thanks, Ray. See you later. See ya. Bye.